the one I feel is going to serve me best for the Campton Park Marathon. It's going to be. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're two weeks out now from the Kempton Park Marathon, two weeks in a day. Feeling excited, managing to stay relatively injury free, free just looking after myself. So we're two weeks out and it's time for the last a long run before the marathon. Now, I guess normally you would expect to do your last long run workout maybe three weeks out and have a three week taper um, through to due to injury, illness, British weather, everything. This marathon training block has not been normal and obviously I'm very uh, grateful really just if I can get to the start line healthy. So last weekend I managed my first really decent long run of this particular block. I managed 30k or about 18 and a half miles. Uh, I ran in the Saucony in Dolphin Parade 3 and it was great. I started really really slowly, kind of picked up the pace to around what might be a potential marathon pace for me and pushed it on a little bit as well and uh, felt pretty strong at the end of 30k so that was good. Now I'm a little bit undecided as to which shoes I should go for. So thank you if you've seen my uh, previous video on the Battle of the Browns where I tested out my ridiculous shoe collection to find out which was the most efficient at marathon pace and the Alpha Fly came out top. However, I'm not 100% certain as to whether I want to wear the Alpha Fly for the Kempton Park Marathon or not. A couple of reasons. Um, firstly, as I just said, this training block hasn't been brilliant. Added to that, it's uh, really my first marathon, uh, first complete marathon where I'll be running a marathon all in one go in the race. So I know deep in my heart I'm not going to be running this to my full potential. Um, and if I go out trying to aim for some crazy time, what's likely to happen is what happened at Abingdon last year is my body's likely to fall apart. So do I use my Alpha Fly shoes for that? knowing that I'm not going to be sort of going full pace, knowing that the Alpha Flies don't run brilliantly at slow paces, and knowing that I'm potentially just putting more and more miles on something that uh, maybe I want to save for a more special day. On the other hand, <coughs> do I use my old Vapor Flies that I've done nearly uh, sort of 500 kilometers now uh, and run potential risk of injury knowing that they uh, may sort of basically just fall apart in the marathon or they may not give my legs the adequate cushioning that they need or do I go for option three which is the Sokoni Endorphin Pro 3 which I'm really enjoying running in I ran a long run in them last week and uh, well I don't feel that they are as efficient as the Alpha Fly or the Vapor Fly from my testing and also just generally just feeling they do feel incredibly natural to run in and they felt really good at the end of 30k the uh, the plate held up the foam sort of didn't compress really much on me they, they felt as good as when I started so anyway this brings me to today long run I'd like to hit 20 miles just psychologically so that I've done 20 miles before the marathon so I've broken that down into a 2k warm-up which I'm on now and then I thought what I'd do is pick all three shoes and run 10k in them. Now, I'm under no illusions I'm going to be more tired on the second and third 10k than I am on my first. So this isn't really about measuring heart rate data or measuring efficiency. I haven't got my heart rate monitor on. In fact, I won't be running with it at Kempton Park because uh, if I wear it for that long, it tends to give me blisters. <clears throat> I'm going to really just judge these shoes on kind of perceived effort, feeling. I'll look at the heart rate data a little bit. But I'm going to start off in the Silconi Endorphin Pro 3 because I've run in them already and I know that they're great for a long run and they feel good. I'm going to switch the Vaporfly for the middle 10k because I know that they are more efficient on paper and they're getting old. I'll just put them in the middle. And then for the last 10k where my legs will probably be trashed and my form will be starting to go, I'll put on the Alpha Fly and just see how they feel and how my form is affected uh, by wearing them when I'm running at that kind of a pace. The other thing I should say is uh, I meant to get out for this run a couple of hours ago, but I slept awfully again. Had a couple of good weeks of sleep last night, half past two, wide awake, end of that. So I don't even know if I've got 32K in me. We'll, we'll see what happens. 
I'm excited and hopefully just the idea of breaking this long run up into uh, essentially four sections will hopefully keep me going a bit longer. Um, I've got supplies back at the car, got music, got tunes, let's get going. sort of tell you the plan, pacing plan for these three 10k. Um, so my plan is to run the first 5k of each 10k. Uh, basically sort of sub four hour marathon pace, which is about 530 a kilometer. <clears throat> and then the second 5k, I base it more on effort and how I feel really, but I'm gonna aim for around 510 a kilometer for those second 5k of every 10k. I'm just coming up to 5k in lap one, so I'm going to be Dolphin Pro 3. Um, I should say, when I planned this route, it is pretty flat. Uh, it's about 50 meters of elevation every 10k, which um, I don't know about you, but that's pretty flat around here where I live. There is only one significant downhill or uphill, depending which way you're running. So it's downhill for me on laps one and three. But as I'm coming up to 5k, it's going to be uphill on the reverse lap when I'm wearing the uh, Vaporfly when I'm sort of um, kicking into slightly faster pace so that's just another thing that's going to make these uh, comparisons much more subjective rather than objective anyway I'm uh, as I say I'm on that downhill now looks a bit like this the camera never quite captures it and I'm going to turn left and run past the, uh, the Army Golf Club and uh, into some woods. Tiny, tiny bit of trail on this 10k route, right by the canal. Nothing much, I pop onto the canal path, but otherwise it's all tarmac. Uh, Endorphin Pro 3, feel amazing, as they always do. Uh, just locked into a nice groove. And they do, which may swing it for them, they do feel great running at, you know, easy paces. You could almost make them basically a daily trainer. And go out and do your easy runs as well they are sort of that easy just to kind of step into a groove on um right well i'm about to hit 5k i'll notch it up and i'll report back at the end of that About the first 10k done, uh, 53.18, average pace 5.19, average heart rate 156, and I peaked out at 168. But yeah, overall that felt fine. Legs are a bit fatigued, probably from last weekend, um, and lack of sleep. But yeah, feeling pretty good. Endorphin Pro 3 felt amazing, uh, kind of at slow uh, paces. As I picked up the pace, it definitely felt uh, on the firmer side, but you know, still very efficient. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. My shoe, the, the next pair of shoes should get progressively softer as we go through. Um, so yeah, 10K, uh, and it's got me almost exactly back to the car. So I won't have too much recovery, um, but just that little bit of recovery is good. I think it just helps break up this session for me because I didn't really fancy uh, 20 miles in one uh, slog sort of two weeks out from a marathon. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to the car, get changed. Uh, let's get the vapor flies on, see what happens then. Right, just starting the second 10K. Um, I've said it once and I'll say it again. The uh, Endorphin Pro 3 are so much easier to get on and off your feet compared to these other super shoes. Vapor flies are such a faff. I'm kind of swapping over a gel and a running water bottle. Uh, at the start of each uh, sort of 10k really and that's all I'm taking with me so uh, definitely cool down a little bit as well and take me a little bit of time to warm up so I'm 3k into the Vaporfly 
and uh, <laughs> straight away it's just uh, it's really hard to run slow in these things I keep on going under 530 pace which is supposed to be sort of what I'm holding but anyway they uh, they feel great compared to the endorphin pro they actually uh, they're a bit of a, a nice little cuddle actually um, yeah sort of changed my thinking a bit really paper flies uh, killing it at the moment and actually yeah they can run easy but um, it's not really what they're designed for just, you just always feel they're kind of like chipping you forward and I'm quite a uh, mid striker really I don't tend to heel strike very much uh, certainly the faster I go the more I tend to land in my mid foot so uh, and the vaporfires really kind of promote that uh, I'll check in just before we start 5k which will be that nasty little lap slope into a uh, marathon pace I'll check back then So second can second 10k done. Whew. That was uh, 53.04 average pace of 5.18 and average heart rate 157. It's pretty good, really. Uh, Nike vapor flies. I got my 5k PB in these shoes. I've uh, raced half a marathon. I've done 20 miles of a marathon. I've done countless long run workouts, and they pretty much just kicked the Sorconi Dolphin Pro speed out of the running. Um, much nicer as well, they just felt more efficient even after the, at the end of that. Um, so as I was you know, approaching a half marathon for the day, they, they felt um, like they were protecting my feet. Didn't feel as harsh as the Sorconi uh, Dolphin Pro 3s at the end of that 10K. Yeah, that's really interesting. Anyway, got one 10K left to go. Not gonna lie, pretty tired now. Gonna have a gel, change my shoes, and uh, let's see if I can hold it together on the Alpha Flies. I'm gonna be slightly underfueled for this last 10K because I've basically taken a gel before each one. Um, so that's kind of almost a gel an hour really, which I would probably take more than during the marathon, but. I'm running at 5.30 pace, heart rate has sort of jumped up to 158, which is slower than the other two. But I'm going to kind of ignore heart rate for this one because I'm probably going to be pretty fatigued. But already with the Alpha Fly, I can kind of feel that uh, you kind of need to put the effort in with these uh, to get more out. Uh, they feel very inefficient at a slow pace. Um, so I'll be interested to see how they get on with this first 5k. There's nothing like putting really sweaty feet into clean shoes to make you go eek. Anyway, I'll check in in a couple of k once I've settled in. So I'm about a kilometre and a half in to the Alpha Fly and um, yeah, I haven't been able to run at 5.30 pace yet. It just doesn't feel right. Um, whether that's because I've you know, just locked into a groove faster than that. Or, um, or these shoes just, yeah, they just they don't feel comfy at, uh, at a slower pace. I can feel them kind of springing me forward um, or springing me up, really. Um, yeah, ankles don't feel great at this pace either. I mean, you know, I'm tired now. I'm going to hit uh, like a kilometer 24. Um, so, yeah, I'll just have to see. I think I'll check in later. I'm going to try and ease the pace back slightly and see how we get on. All right. Okay. Just approaching uh, 5k in the Alpha Flies. This is definitely my least favourite 5k so far. Um, yeah, I mean, given that I've nearly been running for three hours, maybe I should have had more than three gels. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, these shoes are not meant to run at this pace. It's been very difficult. My slowest 5k I think has been uh, 526. Heart rate's been sort of sitting around 161, 162. So a lot of heart rate drift going along. Um, anyway, I've actually been looking forward to running faster. So yeah, so it's got this heel to contend with. 
this is a good workout whatever happens so uh, I'll see you in five Okay to go. Uh, really tired now. Really hungry. Uh, let's kick in. Uh, Hundred meters to go. If I ramp the pace up a little bit, this will be the fastest kilometer. Okay, uh, that's five, 13 per kilometer. Significantly the fastest 10K, 52.17. Uh, now, average heart rate for the Endorphin Pro was 157, for the Vapor Fly it was 158, and for the Alpha Fly it was 166, with a, a highest uh, peaked at 175. I'd say that definitely the last 5k I was running at sort of threshold, anaerobic threshold. Um, well, masses of heart rate drift going into that last 10k and um, I was also, should have had another gel, felt really uh, tired and hungry. 32k banked, that's amazing. Overall conclusions, ultimately out of the three, the one I feel is going to serve me best for the Kempton Park Marathon. It's gonna be the Vaporfly next percent. The reason being, the Alpha Fly really only felt good when I hit about five minute kilometers. So those last 5K in the Alpha Fly, I was averaging about five minute Ks or eight minute miles. Um, and I'd say that, you know, even, any, even running at 5.10 a kilometer, it didn't feel great. It felt, it felt awkward, it felt clunky. And the whole time I had to remind myself to kind of lean forward uh, to get the most out of them, to get the most out of those AirPods. Whereas the Vaporfly naturally tips me forward, I felt like I could just run more naturally in them. The Endorphin Pro probably run the most naturally of all three, uh, but I can see that, I mean, the data shows me my heart rate is just lower in the Vaporfly, it's just more efficient and my legs feel more protected. So, uh, really good to do that today i'll tell you one thing as well if i'd gone out and run 32k in the alpha fly which is kind of what i wanted to test how they were like at the end of a long run that kind of would have been a waste of 20k and a good pair of shoes so sometimes it's worth doing it by breaking it up as well i was able to probably run stronger at the end than i would have run if i'd run 20 20 uh, 32k in one go and i'm two weeks out uh, there was no point in me absolutely kill myself i've got two weeks now to recover eat well probably time for one more threshold session and uh, get myself ready and rested you're only racing yourself remember that